हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू बाजीरा वाई एस अकेडमी सो वी हैव बिन डिस्कसिंग के स्टडीज सिंस पास्ट फ्यू लेक्चर्स सो एस टेडेज लेक्चर ऑल्सो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड थ्री के स्टडीज एंड दीज के स्टडीज फॉर गिवेन इन प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन सो टूडे इज ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट नवंबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग फ्यू के स्टडीज विच आर गिवेन इन प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन सो द फर्स्ट के स्टडी दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इज डॉक्टर एक्स इज अ लीडिंग मेडिकल प्रैक्टिशनर so he is a leading medical practitioner in one particular city and he has set up a several charitable trust through which he plans to establish a super speciality hospital okay so he is going for a, a philanthropic work so he plans to set up a super speciality hospital and that tends to benefit the all the sections of the society in that particular city so incidentally uh, incidentally that of the state where the hospital is planned had been neglected over the years so the state where the hospital is uh, coming is actually neglected when it comes to providing affordable health care for the people so the proposed hospital would be a boon for the region so if once the hospital is set up then that could be a, a boon for the region because the state was already neglected since already the state is being neglected if any hospital is being set up in this region it could be a boon for the region so now you are heading a tax investigation agency in that region or in that state okay so what is your role you are a, a tax investigating agency head so once you went to an in, uh, one, once you went to an inspection to doctor's clinic so upon uh, inspection your officers found that there are certain irregularities so they are major irregularities so you found out some of some of the major irregularities so in fact few of them are uh, substantial so uh, whatever uh, irregularities they were found few of them were substantial and they have resulted in considerably withholding the tax by doctor x now paying tax is very important it is the duty and the obligation of every citizen it is a legal obligation so in this context because of these major irregularities doctor x have not paid taxes so there are ma major irregularities and that led to considerable withholding of tax okay so that should be paid by doctor x now okay so it is the obligation on the part of doctor x to pay this amount of tax so so however uh, while investigation has been going on while you found out major irregularities the doctor is so far cooperative with you and your team so he even undertakes to pay the tax amount immediately so he ready to pay all the tax amount so however there are certain other deficiencies also uh, you found out major irregularities along with irregularities there are certain deficiencies as well uh, in his tax complaints when it comes to his tax complaints so this is purely a technical in nature so there are some technical irregularities also see uh, understand the case so understanding case study is very important once you understand you will be able to identify the ethical issues which are involved in the case what are the different dimensions uh, which are involved in the case in order to make any appropriate decision it is very important that you first identify the stakeholders who are involved in this case and you should also identify the relevant ethical issues or ethical dilemmas in the case so once you are able to identify these things you can make a better decision you can make a better judgment so apart from the major irregularities you already found there are some technical defaults and they were pursued by the agency so considerable time and energy of the doctor will be diverted to issues that are not so serious i mean if you take up these minor technical deficiencies also then considerable time and energy will be wasted so uh, you have to understand the other dimension of the case also so the other dimension is that the proposed hospital would be a boon for the region why because this region is continuously neglected so if any hospital comes here that could be a boon for the region so you have to take into consideration this aspect of this dimension also okay further in all probability it will hamper the prospect of hospital coming up there so for example if you continues to take up 
all these technical deficiencies along with the major irregularities you found out major ir irregularities no doubt about that but doctor has agreed to pay all the dues so there is no doubt about that but apart from that there are certain irregularities technical glitches technical deficiencies also so if you take up those deficiencies then it could lead to the a considerable wastage of time and energy of the doctor and in fact taking up these things will also not helpful for these tax agency in tax collection so in this uh, situation what should be your response or what should be your uh, uh, you know how do you respond to this so firstly the first part of the question says that you need to identify the ethical issues involved in the case so what are the ethical issues involved in the above case this is the first part of the question and the second question is uh, uh, is about taking a broader view ensure substantial tax so uh, you have found major irregularities doctor agreed to pay those dues so ensuring substantial tax compliance ignore defaults that are merely technical in nature so what is your view on this statement so whether you support this statement or you are against this statement secondly uh, the third question is as the head of the tax agency which course of action will you opt and why so what should be the course of action for you uh, as a head of the tax agency so because please understand you are also the head of the tax agency so first and foremost we need to identify the all the stakeholders in the case so who are involved in the case so firstly the first stakeholder is dr x himself okay so he is a medical practitioner and he is also uh, you know going for a, a philanthropic activity where he wanted to set up a super specialty hospital in a neglected region okay so therefore this should be taken into consideration now after that uh, you also a stakeholder because you are the head of the tax investigation agency so as a uh, as a head of the tax investigation agency you have to bound by the uh, rules and you have to follow your duties now whenever in the question it is specifically asked to write about the stakeholders you not just write the stakeholders but you should also write the stakes which are involved for each of these stakeholders so for example when we talk about the tax investigation uh, uh, officer as a head of the tax investigation agency what are the stakes you have to follow your duties okay so you have to diligently do your duties and you have to follow the rule of law any decision which is taken should be based on the objective criteria rather than going simply by the emotions so third uh, stakeholder is people who intended to get benefited from the hospital why because the hospital is located in a neglected region if this hospital is set up in that particular region it could be a boon for the region because many people would tend to get benefit if hospital is set up and the fourth stakeholder you can also write about the state where the hospital is going to set up because the state has continuously neglected the developmental role since it has neglected the developmental role so the state is also a stakeholder because it has the duty to provide affordable health care for all the citizens universal health care it should provide so state has also neglected its role in this case study now the second part of the question which says that uh, this is also i mean first part of the question now ethical issues involved in the case so what are the ethical issues involved in the case so there are a set of ethical issues the first and foremost we need to talk about the social justice aspect of the case study since the hospital is going to set up in a neglected region and several people including the economically weaker sections and the marginalized sections tend to get benefit from the hospital if any hospital is set up here then that leads to the universal access to health care or better health care and it even reduces their out of pocket out of pocket expenditure okay so because of this reason uh, if any hospital is set up in that particular region it ensures social justice now after that we should also uh, understand the responsibility of a public servant so you are the tax investigation agency head 
so as a head of the tax investigation agency your responsibility is following rule of law and making decisions in a objective manner so this is what your duty is this is what you have to do and if you use your emotions and if you particularly driven by the emotions and that would be antithetical to the rule of law and you are not doing your duties in a diligent way so third duty of dr x to pay taxes on time so it is the duty of every citizen to pay the duty or uh, the taxes on time so because he wanted to do, go for the philanthropic work okay so he wanted to go for the philanthropic work and even if he pays taxes on time that would ensure a greater distributive justice greater distributive justice because the government can be able to spend the tax amount on the poor people so therefore it is also duty of dr x to pay all these taxes on time so after that respect for rule of law whether it is uh, the public servant whether you as a head of the investigation agency or the doctor or the public everyone should respect the rule of law okay so in fact uh, if considerable time and amount goes uh, uh, you know the wastage of considerable amount of time and waste and that could lead to the violation of people right to life this was enshrined in article 21 of the indian constitution so in fact right to adequate health care is also implicitly recognized in article 21 of the constitution so if hospital has not been set up in a time bound manner that also violates people right to life okay now the second question that is asked as part of this case study is taking a broader view ensure substantial tax compliance and ignore defaults that are merely technical in nature okay so this is the second statement this statement says so uh, take a broader view so you found out major irregularities major irregularities in the tax compliance so as per the major irregularities you asked dr x to pay the substantial amount of taxes so he is even ready to pay the taxes so ensure the substantial tax compliance and ignore defaults that merely technical in nature so see this particular statement has two sides both pros and cons so the pros of this uh, particular statement is that we are supporting the right intention whether dr x has been going to set up a hospital in a neglected region so therefore as an officer you are supporting the right intention from dr x so in fact if there is any enquiry any future enquiry has been ordered on you then it can be considered on humanitarian grounds and these technical issues or the technical deficiencies are even minor in nature so therefore you are being allowed okay so you you are not punishable for uh, you know uh, not taking care of these technical uh, deficiencies so after that there is a common good approach that satisfies if we go with this statement so common good means you have already ensured the substantial amount of tax so whatever amount of tax that you have to get you already uh, that has already paid by dr x and secondly if you neglect these minor deficiencies minor technical deficiencies then considerable amount of time energy and the resources also will not be wasted so in that particular region dr x would probably set up a hospital so that provides affordable health care okay so this provides affordable health care for the people so because of this reason it satisfies the common good approach now whenever you are writing answers for these case studies you have to look into the case study from multiple dimensions okay uh, multiple approaches so that involves the common good approach justice approach rights based approach so all those approaches you have to 
take into consideration now justice to the weaker sections if we go by the uh, above statement it definitely ensures justice to the weaker sections because once doctor x set up a hospital a super speciality hospital now all the services like diagnosis medicine and other treatment can be provided at an affordable cost or even at a free of cost so that ensures universal access to healthcare for the people so ultimately it ensures social justice for the people and it also protects or safeguards article 21 of the indian constitution that is right to life and personal liberty so in fact right to health is implicitly mentioned in article 21 of the constitution so in a way this also ensures article 21 so after that dr x willingness to repay the tax dues because dr x is already ready to pay his dues whatever dues he has to pay he is ready to pay those dues so therefore this can be justified the above statement can be justified now after that the greater good for the greatest number of people so this is also similar to the common good approach because now he, you in this way you're benefiting the greatest greatest number of people because it already ensured the substantial amount of tax okay so this tax can be used by the government in ensuring distributive justice okay distributive justice and on the other hand you are allowing dr x to construct or build this hospital this super speciality hospital in an otherwise neglected region in a particular state so that could be that could ensure greater good for the greater number of people however this statement also has certain cons so what are those cons or what are those deficiencies with the statement so firstly you are setting a, a wrong precedent why because now you are neglecting these minor deficiencies technical deficiencies and since you are neglecting these deficiencies it may set a wrong precedent in future either with dr x or with any other uh, philanthropic activity or people who are disguised as a philanthropist but having access to funds in an illegal manner so therefore in in future it could set a wrong precedent and that could even lead to the evasion of taxes and that we cannot afford and cannot tolerate particularly a country like india so after that it clearly says that there is a violation of rule of law because even if there are technical deficiencies those deficiencies have to be clarified so everything should be clear only then uh, the doctor would be able to uh, set up a hospital because if everything is not clear even if there are technical issues involved in this tax repayment then that could be detrimental for both the tax agency and also for the doctor as well so after that in many trusts they involves greater manipulation of funds in future generally trusts are set up for one particular purpose and these trusts also accept donations right so dr x is going to set up a uh, trust and there's a greater chance of manipulating funds manipulating donations which are received and into these trusts so even if you neglect these small technical deficiencies so that could also lead to the greater manipulation of funds in future and even greater evasion of taxes so therefore it should be taken into consideration and after that it is amounts to not following one's own duties whether we talk about dr x he's himself not following duties because he is not paid the taxes so that led to the tax investigation agency finding out those irregularities and after that even if you not follow those uh, even if you not in complaints with those technical deficiencies technical deficiencies so that could even lead to the dereliction of one's own duties and after that it is clearly against the deontological school of ethics so deontological so this deontological school of ethics has been given by Immanuel Kant 
so what deontological school of ethics is focus should be on means rather than ends okay so this emphasizes on duty of an individual is the highest good so in fact mahatma gandhi also belongs to the deontological school of ethics so therefore this act is clearly against the deontological school of ethics and next the tax evasion impacts distributive justice why because evading taxes would constrain governments with critical funding government cannot make uh, you know government is unable to uh, pay for the expenditure on social welfare social welfare whether it is education health care everything so government is unable to pay for the social welfare of the people so therefore tax evasion have to be dealt in a very strict and uh, sincere way okay so there should be a zero tolerance when it comes to a tax evasion in any form so right so the third question is what course of action would you choose as a head of tax investigation agency and why so what should be your future course of action what you should choose in future and why you should why you will choose this option so firstly it will allow dr x to pay the tax dues because dr x is ready to uh, the pay tax dues even if there are irregularities so therefore the course of action should be you know uh, allowing the doctor to pay the substantial amount of taxes and also allowing the doctor to set up a hospital and secondly condemning substantial investigation okay conducting sorry conducting substantial investigation to find out the irregularities which are involved so we need to conduct a substantial investigation substantial investigation and that is the essence why because with the substantial investigation you can unearth any such irregularities okay so since he is going to set up a trust it is very important to conduct such uh, uh, you know substantial tax investigation so after that we should also talk about the technical issues minor technical deficiencies that are being involved so therefore all these technical issues have to be explained to dr x so this is very important explaining all the technical issues or the technical deficiencies with dr x after that we need to give him the flexibility why because he is setting up a hospital in a remote area so that is for the good cause so therefore we need to encourage him we need to give a flexibility so that he could comply with all technical issues okay slow uh, you know because it will not result in wasting substantial amount of time as well as energy okay so that is very important and also it leads it results in providing a certain exemptions on humanitarian grounds so he is doing it for the good cause no doubt about that since he the doctor x has been doing for doing this for good cause so we can give flexibility in terms of neglecting those minor deficiencies on the humanitarian grounds because it ensures greater good for the greater good for the greatest number of people so that is utilitarian principle so in this context why we are providing this exemption to dr x why you are providing as a tax investigation officer why you are providing this exemption to the doctor so why you have chosen this course of action when it comes to the doctor firstly whatever uh, the doctor has been doing it ensures universal health care you already know that this is a neglected region okay so since this is a neglected region okay so it is a neglected region so therefore it provides universal health care for the people in that particular region so after that it is in line with the social justice why because now if us if we set up a hospital it ensures that their fundamental right to life 
under article 21 and also right to health can be protected this is also implicitly mentioned under article 21 so in fact it is not resulting in violation of law because the major irregularities were found out by you and those uh, to the extent of those irregularities doctor x is even ready to pay the tax amount so therefore it is not amounting to violation of rule of law and after that it is also important that we need to develop trust among the people about the governance processes so we all know that the governance processes are complex okay so they are time taking however if we provide this flexibility to Dr. X, he is coming up with a good cause, then obviously it creates a good impression among the people. It creates a good impression among the people about the government. So therefore, in the long term, it develops a trust and trust is very important between people and the government. So in fact, whatever the tax department has done, motivate other philanthropists. So other individuals who wanted to go for such a compassionate activities in the region because the region is already a neglected region. So therefore, since it is a neglected region, if any such activity would be a boon for the region. So when you write the conclusion in this answer, so you should not just go by the objective criteria. So it is also very important that you should take care of the, uh, you know, the emotional aspect. Okay, so the empathy and the compassion and the need for social justice and social welfare of the people. Okay, so and this is also not substantially violation of rule of law because you are not neglecting the, uh, you know, major irregularities in this case. However, the doctor, you have to get the assurances from the doctor, whatever technical issues which are involved here, they can be solved in future. Okay, gradually with the cooperation from the doctor and the tax investigation agency. So this is how you can conclude this answer. So the next case study that we are going to discuss here uh, is about, you know, environment versus development conflict. Okay, so conflict between environment versus development. So this is one of the most important case study that UPSC every year asks about this case study. Okay, so in this case, you are a head of a policy think tank and there's a proposal to cut more than 20,000 trees to build a residential colony in that capital. So this is a capital of a country. So in that capital of the country, there's a proposal to cut to 20,000 trees to build a residential colony in that area. So the city has one of the highest homeless populations. Okay, so the population are considered as homeless. So one of the highest homeless populations in the country and settlement will be used for them. Okay, so if a residential area is built, then that settlement would be used for the people in that region. However, this news has generated a lot of public debate because it leads to the destruction of environment because we are cutting down trees and they are very often considered as urban lungs okay so because they purify their role in purifying the air however while on the one hand there's a, a need to expand the urban infrastructure okay so there's a significant need to expand the urban infrastructure why because there's a meet, need to meet the demands of growing population so on the other hand, environmental conservation, environmental sustainability and protection of environment is also very important in this respect. Okay. So therefore, you are being asked to deliver a lecture about this. Okay. For the policy makers and also the concerned citizens in which you have to specifically deal with the following questions. So no doubt that we have understood this case study is related to a conflict, a crisis between environment and also development. So what are the what are the subjects where you have to talk, uh, where you have to deliver a lecture? So those subjects, firstly, why do you think such situations arise in the first place where developmental activities and environmental conflict concerns often come out as antithetical to each other? 
okay so uh, you understood the question understand the question so why do you think such situations arise in the first place where such situation means there's a debate between environment and development so why do you think such situations arise in first place where developmental activities and environmental concerns often come out as antithetical to each other second question is what should be the short term and long term solutions for tackling such situations in these regions so the first uh, part of the question you need to identify the ethical issues which are involved in this case so what are the ethical issues involved so firstly very important there is a crisis and the conflict between environment and development so both should go hand in hand however nowadays we have been focusing excessively on development and that leading to degradation of existing environment degradation of environment so after that we should also talk about uh, the poverty and poor living conditions of the people in those areas now this particular region is known for the largest population of homeless country uh, homeless uh, people so therefore we need to we should also take into consideration the poverty and poor living conditions of the people and their aspiration to live a dignified life with decent standards okay now if we don't provide decent living standards or dignified life that could be injustice on the part of the weaker sections and this could also violate article 21 of the indian constitution okay so after that the violation of right to clean environment that is implicitly provided in article 21 of the indian constitution so because if you continuously degrade the environment if you continuously cut down the for, uh, cut down the trees in those areas then there would be chances that higher air pollution and that we are currently experiencing in delhi cities like delhi mumbai okay there would be higher air, air pollution and that could lead to you know a violation of right to clean environment that is enshrined in article 21 of the constitution so after that it also amounts to the violation of the right to health why because clean environment is being polluted because of cutting down trees and excessive emphasis on development so the development that is driven by the industries and their emissions and vehicular transmissions so therefore violation it also amounts to violation of the right to health as well so people would suffer several health related consequences because of excessive focus on development over environment now in this context the second uh, the first part of the question which is being asking here why do you think such situations arise in first place and where developmental activities and environmental concerns often come out as antithetical to each other okay so firstly in urban areas if you look at the urban areas there is an inadequate uh, inavailability or lack of availability of adequate land in those urban areas so generally what happened in recent times because of migration because of migration to urban areas generally what happened people have been migrating to urban areas and that led to higher populations higher populations in those urban areas and that led to inadequate land in those areas so therefore we have to cut down trees to build settlements or to build housing societies and there are developmental needs also because of growing demands in these urban areas growing demands in urban areas there is a need for more and more infrastructure for example recently in mumbai a forest have to be cleared for constructing a metro project okay so there was a severe backlash against this even in bengaluru in order to construct a metro there's a need to cut down trees and even people have protested against this move by the government so therefore ever increasing developmental needs require cutting down the trees cutting down the forest clearing forests and after that 
there's a high population and poor living conditions of the people who are living in urban areas so we know about that because in urban areas when people have been migrating from rural areas to urban areas for better living standards so what generally happens is because the urban areas are not able to provide enough living conditions or proper living standards for the people so that even led to more and more demands of welfare of the people who are in those urban areas so after that inadequate environmental education is also a major problem in urban areas so people are not adequately uh, educated about the environmental concerns of cutting down or clearing forests or degrading the environment so therefore this should also be taken care of now after that there's also a poor developmental planning so why because these urban areas lack expertise and they even lack the necessary capacities okay so since they lack capacities and expertise their policy planning is poor so it is represented as poor planning by these urban local bodies and that is very often leading to damage to the existing environment in those urban areas so in several times uh, in many times in those urban areas vote bank politics have been playing a crucial role so as we have already discussed several people in those urban areas are homeless so they require homes better living standards education everything so however since in order to attract these people in order to attract uh, the vote from these uh, communities the politics or the politicians have promising these without taking into consideration the environmental consequences of cutting down the forests particularly in urban areas so this is very important in recent times you can see several cities have been uh, doing this for infrastructure or ever growing infrastructure needs in those areas and in fact developing a sense of injustice among people also because uh, people have been migrating to urban areas and they are living in slums and they lack proper living standards also and this create a sense of injustice among the people that the government has not been doing anything for them so this further increases pressure on the policy planners to come up with the appropriate solutions and that is very often come with cutting down or clearing forests in those urban areas so uh, if you remember these forests are very often known as urban lungs why because they play a very important role in purifying the polluted air and in fact there is a need for sustainable development now we have 17 sustainable development goals and we need to achieve these sustainable development goals by 2030 and in order to achieve the sustainable development goals these urban areas or the urban centers have to play the crucial role into this so therefore it is very important that we need we should also take into consideration now you can see here uh, whenever you write the answer you can do uh, you can uh, write such a diagram for example sustainable development can be achieved through okay a proper synthesis of society economy and environment so next uh, so what should be the short term and long term solutions that have to be taken for tackling such issues so what are the uh, you know measures you have to take so firstly when we discuss about the short term measures there is a need for comprehensive environmental impact assessment before undertaking any project because this is what the comprehensive environmental impact assessment is what has been neglected so there is a need for environmental impact assessment so that we can understand what are the consequences of a particular project in future so therefore we could come out with appropriate alternatives appropriate alternatives and they are very important similarly we have to come up with a norm that that imposes penalties on environmental norms now several industries which have been polluting the urban centers for example uh, the industrial 
effluents from several industries across yamuna river it has been polluting the yamuna river stretch so therefore there would be a strict penalties and there's there's a need to impose strict penalties on violation of environmental norms on these industries and we should be emp empowering state pollution control boards with more powers so they can uh, you know cut uh, prevent cutting down trees and there's a need for expertise in urban local bodies because they come up with better planning and that even lead to the capacity building of capacity building of these institutions so they can prevent cutting down trees okay so they can also take up measures to ensure afforestation in those urban areas and the other step is we need to identify the immediate priorities in urban areas what are the immediate priorities for example providing housing better living standards for the people and even sanitation okay so healthcare such priorities have to be identified on immediate basis so after that we need to involve all stakeholders for consensus based decision making in the same now consensus based decision making is very important because this ensures that the decision is taken in a democratic manner and that results in greater good for the greater number of people so what measures you would be taking in the long term so what measures you would be taking in the long term in the long term we should promote green cover in urban areas okay so we need we need to be promoting a green cover in urban areas okay so that is very important in preventing pollution and we should also encourage the industries to plant trees for offsetting their emotions uh, sorry em emissions okay so because uh, industries are largely responsible for polluting environment and even cutting down trees so therefore uh, you know there's a uh, campa funds so that was set up in 2016 and these funds should also be used in uh, you know growing more and more trees planting trees by these industries and that could offset potentially offset the emissions and after that we should be thinking of making a comprehensive environmental impact assessment mandatory for a mandatory for every major project every major project so that is very important after that so uh, you know a greater participation of different stakeholders in environmental protection in urban areas is also very important for example we need to uh, encourage the engagement of ngos civil society organizations so they have the better expertise so they can bring different sections of the society together and that involves the democratic decision making okay democratic decision making and apart from that it is also very important that we need to build capacities of the local populations so when we are able to build the capacities of the local population that helps in protecting the environment and apart from that the international cooperation is also very important in this regard now india has been cooperating with several countries like sweden norway and even denmark so particularly the solid waste management and etc so therefore international cooperation and funding technology transfer is also very important that ensures india to achieve the goals of sustainable development particularly in those uh, cities and in this context the smart cities mission is very important okay the smart cities mission has the potential to address all these challenges if we have properly implemented all the long term as well as the short term measures okay so the next case study that we are going to discuss here is that uh, it is about the chemicals so we have known several years that uh, phthalates and bpa this is bisphenol a so they are being used in manufacturing of plastics now plastic is one of the most serious environmental pollutant so this bisphenol and phthalates are being used in manufacturing of plastics so they can leach from flexible tubing vinyl flooring squeezing plastic toys and vinyl gloves and carbonless register receipts 
so by the all these methods they can leach into human uh, tissues so but recent studies have been suggesting that a largest source of talate and bp exposure in humans is through food supply okay so it is not just through the above mentioned uh, methods but it is through the food supply the packaging where these plastics are being used okay so apart from food supply canned food processed food meat and dairy products are being exposed to bpa and talates during the processing okay so it may be the it may be that the most talate and bpa exposure in food occurs in processing and packaging before the consumers bring it home so in this context this is concerning because the animal studies that have shown that the chemicals function like hormones in our bodies and they can lead to problems uh, you know as a version of attention deficit disorder attention deficit disorder cancer and reproductive health and increased allergies so it comes with a several negative disorders however the federal regulation is the only way that we can control the contamination of food supply of talates and bpa both talates as well as bpa so uh, in this context we have two questions in this case study so the first question is should we regulate the type of plastics used in food production and storage in india so this is the first question should we regulate should we really regulate the type of plastic that is being used in food production in india because this also contains bpa and talates the second question is would you be willing to pay more for food if you like uh, if you knew that it was safe now firstly we have to understand the sources of bpa and talate okay so bpa exposure routes so what are the major bpa exposure routes so they are gastrointestinal tracts and respiratory tract so these are two major Uh, you know apart from the dermal tract so through dermal tract also this bpa uh, you know exposure happens so the bpa exposure route can be a dermal tract or a gastrointestinal tract even the respiratory tract okay so what are the biological samples which are collected for the bpa exposure so before that we need to understand what are the factors so which lead to highest bpa exposure into humans for example the packaged food and water where the plastic is being manufactured and the plastic and the processing of food could also lead to the uh, you know bpa and talate exposure among humans so after that air and dust pollution thermal power plants dental material and occupational exposure so all these factors have a, a significant role okay so they have a, a very crucial role when it comes to the exposure of human beings to the talate and bpa so what are the samples which are being collected collected for uh, you know diagnosing that one particular individual has this bpa exposure so we talk about serum plasma urine saliva hair uh, enematic fluid cord blood so these are being used to find out the or diagnose the expose okay in this context should we really regulate the type of plastic being used in food production and storage in india and why and why not so firstly we need to consider why so why should we uh, we should regulate the plastic that is being used in food production in india so because the bisphenol and talate has a number of negative consequences on human health so firstly it results in respiratory diseases okay so it creates a uh, several diseases uh, among uh, the respiratory tract and even lungs so it even leads to the breast and ovarian cancer among women increased exposure of talate and bisphenol so it associated with the cardiovascular diseases the colon cancer depression among people and it even lead to stress and depression and in longer exposure due to longer exposure to bisphenol and talate uh, insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes mellitus also develops among people apart from obesity polycystic ovarian syndrome and reproductive disorders among males so since because the bisphenol a and uh, uh, talate involves all these negative consequences 
it is always advisable that we need to regulate the type of plastic that is being used in food production so in this context we should also discuss why we should not regulate the type of plastic that is being used so firstly we lack the alternatives so please understand we lack the alternatives to existing plastic now plastic has become universal for every purpose we are using plastic in an excessive manner since there's a lack of alternatives even if we have alternatives they are very costly so what about the affordability of these plastics and the second uh, point is if we regulate these plastics they can impact the plastic industry and as well the raw material based the ancillary raw material based industries so a growing economy like india which cannot afford so recently i would give you an example a single use plastic has been banned by the government so that also involves straws since uh, several uh, drinks uh, you know uh, drinks production companies have been switching over to paper based straws so they are a bit costly they are thinking of sustainable or alternatives to this plastic straw so they are even thinking of increasing the price of the drink because of increased production cost and after that there is unemployment and livelihood security because several uh, workers have been dependent on this plastic industry and other ancillary industries which depend on these plastic industries so therefore unemployment and livelihood security is also another major issue because of this and there's a lack of proper research on harmful impact of these chemicals which are in plastics so once we are able to done a proper research we would be able to know the harmful impacts and after that even threaten uh, even they threaten health of consumers alternatives are being used so there's no guarantee that even if we switch to uh, alternatives they ensure the health of the consumers there's no such guarantee in, uh, into this and there's a lot lack of proper coordination and clear policy guidelines on the same as well so because of this reason we should not regulate the plastic which is found in packaging of these food items so what would uh, the second uh, part of the question is would you be willing to pay more if food is safe so this is the question so yes if a food is safe then uh, you know what what will be your opinion if food cost is more will you be able to spend more so uh, you know there are certain intuitions among the people firstly it it is all about health of the people now people have been focusing on giving priority to a healthy food habit so they are distancing themselves from junk food junk food so that lead to non communicable diseases so in fact it also reduces the out of pocket expenditure because if you eat the unhealthy food and uh, you would you may get uh, you know non communicable diseases cardiovascular diseases or cancers okay so uh, if you eat the healthy food that reduces the out of pocket expenditure and it also results in better life expectancy of the people and improving productivity and secondly uh, because it also involves the security of the family so they are distancing themselves from the junk food unhealthy food so therefore there's a better chance that even if uh, the price of the food increased they may purchase the food and this is also a nutritious form of food and there is no adulteration with this and after that there's a better cost to benefit if we eat the food okay so uh, you know that is better packed that is not using these plastics which cause several issues however even if the price of the food increased several people don't buy this because higher expenditure okay so since their incomes are less even if the prices of the food increased they may not go for buying this even if it is healthy secondly they would look for the cheaper alternatives <clears throat> cheaper alternatives rather than buying the food which is a higher price 
there's a certain degree of adulteration in foods. We cannot uh, with certainty say that food is not adulterated. So there's a certain degree of adulteration in every food item. So therefore, this is also another concern. And in fact, uh, you know, there's a universal acceptability for the foods, even if they are packed with the harmful plastic, because people are habituated to the food. So, uh, you know, they are not taking care of the negative consequences, even if they uh, eat uh, the food in the items which are packed in uh, these things. Okay, so this is particularly because of crowd behavior and the bystander effect. And uh, there's also challenges like unemployment and inadequate financial means. So because of this reason, they may not go for uh, food products which are higher in price. And apart from that, several people lack awareness and information about the same. So because of this reason, they continue to purchase these food items and that comes with several health related risks. So therefore, in this context, uh, we need to shift towards the sustainable alternatives. And that is very important. However, it should not happen in a very short period of time. It will happen gradually. On the other hand, we need to promote research and development to find out sustainable alternatives. Okay, sustainable alternatives. Now, uh, the paper straws are being used and even jute bags have been replacing the plastic bags. So such alternatives can be found in this regard. Okay, so that's all for today. And uh, tomorrow we will discuss few more previous year questions. Okay, so if you like the video, so please hit the like button and thank you.